there are a lot of people that want to learn Haskell and then kind of need to framework to get started with. And with IHP, it's really like you can just learn Haskell along the way. In 2016, I started uh, digitally induced my company here. I worked with like uh, startups and and uh, they needed to like change stuff very often. Well, I always saw like repeating problems uh, uh, happening again and again. Like when we were working for stuff with Node.js, we always had like a lot of quality uh, problems. I've been uh, looking into Haskell. Well, basically the language offers a way to build much more high quality applications. And then I looked at the ecosystem, but all the existing web frameworks in the Haskell ecosystem were built for experts, basically. And at that moment, I, I was still not an expert. I was just trying to get something working with Haskell. Because Haskell is going to compile language, you always have to basically make a change, uh, go to your terminal, restart the application and everything. I just built like the initial version of what later became IHP was just a um, kind of optimized dev server that then uh, kind of automatically, whenever you you make a file change, it will restart the compiler and reload the application and restart everything. It basically make a very fast feedback loop. And then I kind of like built everything else around the database uh, stuff, a view layer and everything. And later it became um, HP. So we start using it then in like first small projects to so start it to, to kind of trying it out. And then we could see, okay, like this works. It just works very well. I made the repository open source um, in a, like a couple of weeks before we we, we actually like la really launched, we posted it on Hacker News. This post was really uh, big and got lots of upvotes and was uh, on the front page for a while. And uh, yeah, and since then kind of IHP wa was continuously growing since then, basically. Advantage of IHP is actually the Haskell type system. Um, it really provides a very solid kind of system. We have like a schema designer, which allows you to kind of uh, design as a like the database structures, but you can also do this in code or in the visual schema designer works both ways. Um, and uh, then for example, we have like code generators. You, when you start, you just create a couple of tables. Uh, then you can use the code, for example, controller code generator to generate like the controller, and then you can directly use it. Yeah, it's a very kind of frictionless experience. It makes it very fast to build stuff. And then on the view side, we also have features like um, HSX, which is like type checked um, version of JSX for Haskell. The total numbers of contributors are to HP I think maybe around 60 or something, but I think it could be better or much, much more people, but I think it's uh, kind of a bit tricky to get everything working. Most people just want to build web applications basically. So we are uh, like uh, seven people uh, at the moment. So it's like, we're still a small company. After we kind of launched the open source version, of course it was, it made sense kind of to see how we can monetize it and use it kind of to grow the company as well, because I think it's like great, uh, like it has great potential and provide so much value for people and it would be good if, if you, for example, could hire people to work on, on the IHP ecosystem and kind of build that beyond our like contributions we do already. So we tried, for example, IHP cloud, which was like the first kind of idea we had, we thought, okay, we build an, um, a hosting solution where you can just like a Heroku, but for IHP, um, which we uh, did launch and worked pretty well. Um, but we've now discontinued actually this year. The monetization of open source projects is really tough um, because you always run into different kind of uh, um, incentive problems. Um, so when you build a something like HP Cloud, um, it's it's not our incentive in a way to um, make it easy to deploy HP apps because this will destroy our kind of hosting business. Um, in, in a way, um, if it's too easy to deploy, you don't deploy with IHP cloud, you just deploy on your own. And, um, these kind of incentive systems are, I think very tricky in open source business models. And it's very important to like carefully think about what incentives you kind of want to do. And <clears throat> so what we later came up with actually is we introduced IHP uh, pro and IHP business, which are like, uh, paid versions of the IHP framework. Uh, with uh, with certain features included that are typically needed for a usage in a professional context. And um, this kind of was actually, I think initially we were worried it might be very unpopular to introduce like paid plans to our MIT licensed open source framework. Um, and we talked, I talked to a lot of people in the IHP community and a lot of people actually told me, hey, okay, I would actually be happy if IHP do, does that because then like a lot of people rely on IHP to be continuously developed. 
And if you pay for it, you can be like, you have peace of mind. There's like people working on it um, versus when it's open source, like tomorrow we could just uh, like discontinue it. Basically, there's no kind of obligation from us to continue, uh, continuously developing it. And uh, and I think this is, this actually shows like the power of the, like of the right incentive structures. Um, so in that case, it's actually very well aligned with what professional users want from IHP. We also have various like larger companies that use IHP in a professional way. And these also like then use uh, IHP business licenses. And then uh, additionally, on top of that, we also offer like kind of support to companies that use like the paid plans typically then also in some ways get in contact with us, like as a consultancy, basically provide services and our experience. So basically just iterated for every way to monetize the work from it and figure out what, 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 what are the problems with each model. If you're around basically somewhere here in Germany, not time is fine. Uh, we are hiring. So that's what I'm at the moment working on. So we have a, like a lot of stuff going on at the moment and we just need a little bit more people, I think, to get everything done. I prefer to hire like people in person again. It's probably a bit unpopular at the moment, but <laughs> um, in the in the past we actually hired people that have been contributors, uh, uh, also remotely. So that worked uh, worked uh, well, I think, for us. People already are very productive from the from the go, right? So so they can just get started with what we do, and don't need that much onboarding. Kind of I think that's also helpful. If you are uh, looking. Into Haskell, basically, you try at IHP. I think it's uh, one of the best ways to get started with Haskell and one of the kind of uh, most reliable ways to build web applications. So it's definitely something uh, I uh, I would recommend everybody to check out and give it a try and uh, build great stuff with IHP.